Hello, my name is Sean Gorski. This is my coworker, Erica Lynn. And today we'll be talking about Sync Computing's work in optimizing and automating the cloud provisioning process. I'll start this talk uh, with a quick overview of the importance and complexity of infrastructure optimization, something that shouldn't be very informative to anybody who has experienced putting together cloud uh, infrastructure before. And then I'll talk about Sync Computing's first product, the Sync Auto Tuner for optimizing single Apache Spark jobs. I'll give a quick demo of the product and also talk about some successful case studies we've had. And finally, I will pass the mic off to Erica to discuss Sync's more ambitious work with Apache job orchestration. So to start on the context, many of you have probably seen charts like this before showing the explosive growth of cloud workloads uh, over the past decade, growing by about 35 times every 18 months or so. Uh, and in tandem with these workload growth, uh, the costs have skyrocketed, re recently reaching about $125 billion a year. Now, as the costs go up, of course, companies are more and more concerned about tuning every knob they can to bring those costs down. That's true in general, but also true uh, especially true in times of economic downturn like today. Now, one of the biggest and most important knobs, but also the one that's safe for last, is optimization. And there are a few reasons for that. The first being that it's really challenging. Um, to properly optimize Apache Spark jobs requires a lot of application insights, a lot of insights into the job itself that, it, that Spark is running, and it also requires a lot of infrastructure insights, things like the instance offerings and the uh, economics of the cloud. Uh, the second reason a lot of people don't do it is just because of the overwhelming amount of choice. So if you go to AWS's website and you look at their instance offerings, you'll see hundreds of different instances to choose from and possibly thousands of settings in different combinations. So if you're an infrastructure engineer trying to decide what, um, what instance type and what cluster size to choose for your job, it's almost impossible to make a truly informed decision that will get you the most optimal result you want, whether that's hitting a certain runtime or getting the job as cheap as you possibly can. And the choice you end up making has real impact on how the job runs. This chart here shows different data points for a benchmark called HiBench. And you can see that choosing different instance types or different cluster sizes can result in orders of magnitude changes in the runtime and in the cost. Uh, a third important reason why optimization is difficult is just one of priority. So again, say you're uh, an, in, uh, an infrastructure engineer um, you probably have multiple Apache Spark jobs you're juggling, and you just don't have the time to go in and micromanage each job to find the optimal operating point. That's especially true when things like cloud economics are dynamic. So at Sync, we saw a great opportunity to combine all of these different facets into a tool which will automatically do this infrastructure decision making for you. So I'd like to introduce you all to the Sync Auto Tuner for single Apache Spark jobs. Here we show this workflow from code development to deployment. And the Auto Tuner targets these three boxes here application tuning, which includes things like executor settings and other Spark settings, the cloud hardware concerning things like memory, IO, storage. And that's informed by the cloud economics. So spot pricing, instance availability, and interruption rates. The auto tuner combines elements of all of these to give you the best recommendation for your Apache Spark job. I'd like to turn over to uh, a quick demo of this product in action, which you can find available for free on our website, syncomputing.com. Uh, you can go to that website and sign up for a free trial. Once you do, you'll be greeted to this product page for the auto tuner. And you'll see we support two different platforms here, Spark on EMR and, and Databricks on AWS. 
if you have an AWS Databricks account, for example, you can come in and you can select your compute type. You can select your plan type. And then you click and drag your most recent Apache, Apache Spark log into this box here. It'll take a little bit to process, and then you'll be greeted with a result that looks like this. This chart shows on the x-axis runtime and on the y-axis cost. The black spot is the operating point of the log that you gave to us from your last production run. And the two curves are possible performance curves that we predicted you could have run it should you have used different infrastructure and different Spark settings. At the top, we give you three convenient pre-selected points, one for performance, one for balance, and one for economy. Or if you'd like, you can select your own point if you see something that's more appealing to you. For any point you select, what you're shown at the bottom of the page is an output that tells you what infrastructure and what settings to use on your next run to achieve the price point that you selected from the curves. Now, you might be wondering what's going on under the hood, and we'd like to give you a little peek. Spark applications are broken down into stages, and each stage consists, consists of a set of tasks. What the Spark Auto-Tuner does is it transforms each set of tasks into how it thinks it will behave on a different infrastructure and with different Spark settings. It then simulates the placement of these tasks onto a cluster, respecting all of the stage dependencies and other rules for stage placement that Spark has. I'd like to turn attention now uh, to some of the successful case studies we've seen. We've had a number of customers come to us for help in optimizing their jobs, and we've been able to show great results, sometimes saving them money, sometimes making their jobs run faster, and sometimes both at the same time, and on both platforms that we support. I'd like to focus in on one, Duolingo, who is our first pilot. They came to us with two main pain points, one for the developers, which was not having any bandwidth to optimize their jobs, and one was the company, which was running into cost problems and explosive growth in the cost of their Spark jobs. They gave us one log that ran at this point in the gray triangle labeled old. We gave them an infrastructure setting that we predicted would run at the dark gray triangle at the predicted point. And when they tried those settings, they found the job now ran at the red triangle labeled new. Duolingo was ecstatic with the 55% reduction in cost, and the slight increase in runtime wasn't bothersome to them, since cost was all they cared about. Another client, a global streaming company, came to us with the same developer pain problems, including a lack of insight on how to properly set Spark configurations. With our recommendations, we showed them an 80% faster runtime and almost a 90% cheaper runtime, in this case, most of the savings coming from properly sizing the executors and increasing the utilization of the cluster. That's the last case study I'd like to show you today. I'd like to turn over to Erica now to talk about Sync's more ambitious work in job orchestration. All right, thank you, Sean. Um, and so now I would like to talk about the sync orchestrator. So as Sean has been talking about, um, even with just a single job, the sync auto tuner can help you navigate this large decision space and um, give you plenty of runtime savings and runtime and cost savings. But what if you have multiple jobs and what if these jobs have dependencies on each other? Then scheduling actually comes into play. And so at Sync, we're developing a product um, that we call the Sync Orchestrator that is aimed at helping you solve this problem. It's still under development, um, but we're super excited about it. And we wanted to show you all some early results. So just to help you visualize the problem, um, before we were talking about a single job, here in these graphs is represented by just one of these squares. 
most of the time, though, people aren't running just one job. You're running many jobs, and often the results of one job are the inputs to another job. And so a lot of the times you have these dependencies that are um, that you can express as a directed acyclic graph or DAG. Uh, one simple case is the one shown on the left here, where you just have a linear DAG. Um, you have a set of six jobs, each one depending on the last one. And you can run this just on a single cluster, just as the single tenant and no one else sharing the cluster. Another common scenario, though, is what's shown on the right, where you have teams or organizations sharing a cluster, and you have users submitting their jobs or DAGs constantly. So these DAGs are streaming in, um, and everyone is sharing the cluster together. So in this case, for each one of these jobs, how do you decide how many resources to allocate to each job and how to schedule the jobs? These are actually all interdependent on each other. And it also depends um, on your other users who are using the same cluster. So th this becomes a really complicated problem really quickly. So that's what the sync orchestrator is trying to solve. We actually took the problem um, that I was describing before and mathematically formulated it so that we can optimize and find you the best way to utilize the cloud. So the Sync Orchestrator is an automated cost-aware solution that globally co-optimizes the application parameters, the resource allocations, and the DAG schedules. What's really cool is as a user, um, before you would have to decide application parameters, resource allocations, like Sean was talking about, um, and this is really burdensome, but actually uh, when you make these choices and then you pass it on to a scheduler, the scheduler becomes really restricted in terms of how much it can optimize the schedule. So the orchestrator actually relieves users from the burden of having to make these choices. And it actually is able to find much better solutions by being able to optimize all of these uh, parameters and resource allocations and schedules together. So at the bottom here is just a visualization of what it's like uh, if you were not using the sync orchestrator and what it might be like if you were to use it. So on the bottom left here, you can see um, here is a representation of a DAG that's been run. Each one of these boxes is a job and the width represents the time spent on the job and the height represents the resources consumed for that job. So um, as Sean was mentioning before, you can think of each one of these boxes as actually being malleable. So if you change the amount of resources you give to each one of these, then that actually changes the amount of time it takes to run that job. So what the orchestrator is doing is it's squeezing and arranging these boxes um, to give you either the overall fastest runtime shown by the green boxes on the right or the cheapest um, settings shown by the red boxes on the right. And then you can also choose in between um, shown by the blue on the right. And all this you can just do with one click. So that's uh, the concept of the orchestrator. We were able to do um, a demo by integrating it with Airflow and Spark. So we constructed two DAGs. Um, each one of these DAGs has 10 jobs. So each one of these nodes is a different Spark job. And we used Airflow to, to launch these DAGs. And so we did two sets of experiments, one with just the default Airflow and Spark, and a second one with the Sync Orchestrator in integrated with Airflow and Spark. So on the right-hand side, you can see the purple dots represent the original default runtime, and the red dots represent the runtime and cost after using the Sync Orchestrator. So when we were optimizing for runtime, we got 37% and 45% faster runtime. And when we were optimizing for costs, we got 78% and 72% lower cost than the default settings. I want to point out also that to use this orchestrator and do the optimization, the overhead was about 30 seconds for these DAGs. And the total runtime of the DAG is on the order of thousands of seconds. 
So it's well worth your time to put in uh, a little bit of time to do the optimization and get a lot of um, runtime or cost savings in return. We did publish a paper on this, so feel free to look, um, follow the link below and read more about it. So lastly, we've been talking about a single DAG demo so far, but what about um, at scale? What about the scenario we were talking before with a multi-tenant cluster and jobs and DAGs streaming in? So we wanted to understand how much benefit we could offer customers. And we did a simulation with the Alibaba cluster trace data. So this contains eight days of cluster data for, uh, consisting of 4 million DAGs and 14 million tasks. And so we did a, a more realistic simulation where these DAGs are being submitted as you go. Um, and the optimization is being triggered um, based on the number of DAGs that are streaming in. And we found that if you were to use the sync orchestrator, um, the total costs would actually only be 35% of your default cost. And the total DAG completion time was only 43% of the original DAG completion time. If you look at each of the individual DAG runtimes, you'll see over 80% of the DAGs had runtime improvement. And you'll see on the right here that a lot of them had very significant improvement. And we actually just added a feature uh, where you can specify SLAs of tasks or DAGs. So you can make sure that the ones, the tasks or DAGs that have these runtime, strict runtime requirements are the ones that get the runtime improvements. And the ones where you can be a little more flexible with the runtime are the ones that can run a little bit slower to get you some cost savings. So hopefully by now we've convinced you that even a simple DAG can be provisioned so many ways in the cloud. And what we do at Sync is try to find you the best one. And what that means is that developers can now focus just purely on the code. You can unlock a new level of performance and you can make infrastructure decisions based on the metrics you care about the most, cost and time. We'd love to hear from you. Um, as Sean mentioned, the auto tuner is available now at syncomputing.com. It's free, and so please go try it out. It's available for Spark on Databricks or Spark on EMR. And if anything um, you heard today about the orchestrator sounds interesting, please uh, schedule a follow up meeting with us, and we'd love to discuss how we might be able to help your organization. Thank you so much.